we're in. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> we're playing D and D. A hundred percent prepared. Hundred yeah, percent prepared D and D. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um. Bam. Um, assuming I haven't completely messed this up, my armor oh. class is now 18. <laughs> oh my goodness. Way better. That's nice. That sounds like a paladin. I don't think anything's going to be able to hit you, but... Because, <laughs> uh, y y y you recall, two shields. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, I don't think they stack for balance purposes, but... According you know, to this, it did. That's spooky. What can I do? Can I know what you you are level one? Can I know what it is with just one shield? Oh, maybe it doesn't stack. Good. That's what I wanted to hear. It says said that it did at first, but then it decided no. Never mind. Eat me, I guess. Which one are you? You're this one. Okay, Gilga. So I'm. I, I've kind of got a little bit of a narrative for each of you. Um, that we're just going to play through. Without further ado, I'm going to be starting with Simbala. Or, uh, Rags, if you prefer. Simba. Well, you know. <laughs> Simba. Ha hang on. <laughs> he has his own music. I just have to figure out how to play it. Oh my. Somebody came prepared. Well, you, you say that. Simbala. It is the day of the eclipse in Norganoth. You're in an alleyway in the warehouse district. Most citizens of Norganoth stay in on the day of the eclipse, superstitious of the dangers that the astronomers warn about. Unexpectedly, a hooded figure runs past, carrying what looks like a black velvet bag. Guards yell in the distance, Find him! Stop the thief! The hooded figure finds a gap between barrels and crates and places the pack inside, paying no mind to you. They walk on, take off their robe, and walk onto the street, looking like any other citizen. Simbala, what do you do? How much does that person look like me? Uh, he could have been about your height and stature. He was he was hooded in the robe and he just kind of he took it off and walked onto yeah. the street as he turned the corner. So you didn't really get a good look at him as he took it off. But well, if I'm am I sort of sitting and chilling next to the wall and um yep and yeah so you're kind of near the wall and if you if you look just just over the like across the crossing of the alleys where they 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 form kind of like a like a T um yeah are, are is the barrels where he placed that black velvet bag. Do I see the people or hear the people coming that we're chasing? Um, the guards seem to have lost track of him. They did say they he seems to have lost them when they went in the alleyway. You could just tell that they're on the, the main road um, okay. looking for someone. I'm a little worried that if I go investigate that, that they're going to be looking for me. Um, I feel like I want to watch for a minute and see kind of if they come down this alley. And if they don't, then I'm going to go take a look. Okay. Well, as it turns out, the guards, they do run past on the street, you know, and they, okay. they, they actually spot the robes on the ground. They're pretty, you know, sure. They, they knew who they were looking for. Okay. They look at you and they ask, did you see anything? Did you see which way he went? I'm absolutely going to point in the correct direction. Okay. He looks at you. He gives a he, he gives he he turns his head a little. He doesn't know whether to trust the information you've given him. Right. But he nods and he heads that direction. All right. Then I'm going to go check out uh check out the thing that he stashed. Okay. As you pick up the bag, you feel that there is a warmth to it. Do you open it? Absolutely. When you open it, you reveal a glass sphere. Inside of it, it contains a swirling cloud of smoke. And you hear a voice, not a clear voice, but a strong, powerful voice, but behind a door, almost, like behind a wall, muffled, suppressed. 
you know, it's not like the voices you've heard before that have tortured you these these past <laughs> years. Okay. And it says, take it. Leave this cursed city. All right. Uh, can I stash it safely in a backpack? You could stash it safely in a backpack. Okay. I'll start by doing that. Okay. Do you leave the city? Pro I think so. I think I'm going to get at least on the edge of town and think about it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not not going to hang around because somebody's going to come back for that. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Yeah. As you get out of the city, um mm -hmm. you you don't live in the city, do you? You live a little ways out, you know, kind yes. of out in the wilds. Are, so do, are you heading back to your to your home? Yeah. Yeah. Uh as you get a fair ways out of the city, you hear the voice again, but clearer. It's stronger. It's a raspier voice. And it says, I have not spoken with a mortal this way in a long time. Tell me, what is your name? Simbala. I say it firmly. Have you taken the sphere out of your backpack now? No. Okay. Ah. I mean, if I'm just hearing it, I'm just trying to respond. Yes. So you are you are hearing it in in your own mind. Yes. Yes. Ah. Simbala. I can tell you are troubled by your past, but not all is lost. You can still fix things, redeem yourself. You just need to be stronger. You need power power I can give you. And as he speaks to you, you can feel that there is a power behind his offer. You know that he could give you the power to, you know, solve solve problems in your life. All I, I must ask, find her. Oh. Must find her. I can help you. All I ask is that you return something to me I've lost. An object of mine. You'll know it when you find it. What say you, Simbala? Agreed. And as you agree, almost like flipping a switch, you feel a warmth spread over you. Across your body, over your mind, clearing away and those voices that you've heard, those doubts, those concerns, and they go and they, you feel this, this warmth across your whole body, and you, you know that you have access now to power you didn't have before, and is the, is the sphere still in your backpack? Mm-hmm. You hear it crack and shatter, and out billows a a column of smoke. And like that, it's gone. Rising into the wind, vanished. Interesting. I just say, where do we begin? Hmm, where do we begin indeed? Riker. What's up? You are a dragonborn, right? Yep. You you kinda you kinda like the nature, yeah? Yeah. Nature's you know, pretty cool. You you're good with animals, you you know, you like the forest. Which is which is interesting for, you know. A, a white dragonborn such as yourself, um, you know, all the perks that it, that entails. You are away from your home. Well, you're exiled. Yes. Yeah. So you're in the kingdom of Norganoth, and 
you're just trying to, you know, pick up jobs, get some cash, make a living. You've been hired by a merchant to drive his cart. Because okay. he wants he wants a, a traveling companion and he wants someone who's, you know, who can take care of the horses along the way when they do. And it's been a steady it's been a steady job for you. You are going to be traveling from the town of Everhill to Norganoth. Now, you're not afraid of the forest, but there have been reports that the last couple caravans have sort of gone missing. Their deliveries haven't made it to Norganoth. Some say that it's wild animals. Some say that it's bandits. Do you want to speak? Do you want to ask Tomas anything about this job? Um. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is fine. Interesting. Gilgo. You awaken in Knuckleheim, your home these past 78 years. <laughs> yes. You are a dwarf in your prime and between training with the quartermaster Trey Hunter or working on your skills with your spiked Pavish shield and the work that you have with your family working in the fungus station, you can't help but feel that there is, you know, a monotony. Your routine's becoming normal. You're getting used to it. One day while you're training, Trey Hunter, the quartermaster who you train with, she says to you while dueling, we have a mission for you, as she swings her axe at you, and you parry. Our neighbors to the south, and she swings another that you again, deftly, you, you've you trained with Trey Hunter for a long time, block. They'll soon be experiencing an eclipse, and she makes a large overhead attack. Uh... Roll a d20 for me. Just a base d20? Sure. Okay. Girl to 14. You've, you've seen this move before. You're experienced with this. And it is... It is difficult. And you can feel the brunt of it as she strikes. But... As she swings overhead, you put up both your Pava shields and you hold firm and you, you block the blow. That'd actually be startlingly effective. Yeah, well, that's what you did. <laughs> You've trained for this. This is true. So the quartermaster says to you, this eclipse this is a prestigious event for those in the Temple of Foltis. The High Priest has asked for me to send one of my students to spread the word of Foltis, and I can think of no one better. Don. And don't sell yourself short, Gilgo. You've learned so much in training, but it's time for you to learn from the world and to teach our neighbors of Foltis's ways. I'm sure you'll be in Foltis's favor when you return. Is there anything you want to say to the quartermaster? I... <laughs> I thank you for your kind words. And I would bow respectively. Okay. As you depart the training field for home, as you're arriving, you see that ahead of you, priests have already arrived um, from the Temple of Foltis. That, that is your 
your deity, the deity of your people. And Foltis is the deity of uh, a lot of things. <laughs> of light, order, and flexibility. The sun and the moon. So an eclipse is a pretty meaningful event. You know that you're going to go further than you've ever gone before. At your home already are priests from the Order explaining to your family what your mission will be. And they understand your mission and they know that you'll, you'll go. But is there someone that you want to say goodbye to? Maybe someone who won't understand? Okay, fat. <laughs> yeah. You have um, a pet cave bat. They li she lives in the fungiculture cave that mm -hmm. uh, your family runs. You found Ondoa, the cave bat, since she was a pup. You found her with a broken wing in a storm many years ago. Oh, I. Very sad story, that. Yeah, it's yeah. true. As you go in the cave and you call her name, are you still wearing the sh your shield on your back? Or are you carrying it? Uh, they're, uh, probably for ease of movement, they'd be crossed over my back. Yeah. So as you call her, she flies over to you, and instead of landing on your shoulder like, you know, you might expect some flying creatures to, she lands upside down on your shield and nestles between the shield and your back and the back of your hood. You take off your shield, you place it on the ground in front of you, and there she is, hanging on your shield, looking at you now. Ondo's had a difficult life for a bat. She's found panicked, alone, with a broken wing, and you took care of her, and she healed. If you look closely, and if you know what you're looking for, you can still see her wings don't quite beat evenly, not quite symmetrical. But if it ever bothered Ondoa, you'd never notice. She looks at you, she tilts her head, and she lets out a high-pitched squeak. Is there anything you want to say to her? A stick to nonverbal communication. Okay. As one does with pets. Sure. Do you do you do you and somehow try to comfort the bat or somehow explain that you're leaving? Well, I would scratch the sides of her neck and then sort of coax her onto my finger then lift her up to a uh, part of the uh, cave that I could reach. Mm -hmm. And then just uh, softly smile and breaking the nonverbal thought that I had just a moment ago. Just yes. not today. I see. Okay. Ando, as you as you pet her and as you talk to her, she's she squeaks. She's happy. She she's happy anytime you're around. She thinks of you as, you know, her family after that storm. As you leave, you question if Andua understood what you said. In your heart, you you think she did. You know that she'll be cared for while you're away. Your family, you know, knows you're on a mission and knows how you're willing to take care of Ondoa. And you know they'll do the same. Fast forward three weeks. You're in the human town of Everhill. You were given some coin for lodging and necessities by the priests before you set off. Everhill is not a large city by any means, but its town center can still get quite busy in the daytime. Uh, a lot of hustle and bustle. 
They have a few inns and pubs to choose from. One cheap and dilapidated, one that is average, and one that is actually quite nice. Which one would you like to stay at? <sighs> you were given gold by, um, you know, by your, the temple before you left, so you can afford any of them. Well, the one more towards the dilapidated side is a little bit more homey. This yeah. is an adventure, is it not? It is. It's, it's, it's a bit drafty. Okay, when well, you get there and the beds are, are quite hard. I mean, you're a dwarf, so these things don't bother you as much as they might some of their other patrons. But one of the nights while you are outside, uh, you actually find that there's a little bit of crime in the city after dark. <laughs> it's the last night that you plan to stay before you made way to the capital city of Norganoth. And as you're returning uh, to the inn, you spot a human man on the ground and standing over him is another man with a dagger. What do you do? I would try and see if I could hear what was going on before intervening. Okay. The man uh, on above him uh, definitely seems to be uh, mugging the man. The man on the ground is looks like he's a little bit well off. He seems to be uh, of the merchant class, and the man on top of him is yelling, "Give me, give me your gold! Come on, I know you've got some." I know you just got that shipment in. Surely you've got gold now. Would you like to intervene? Uh, yes, yes. Yes, I would. How would you like That's to do that? Uh, quietly but firmly walk up to the mugger and place my hand sharply upon his shoulder. You really don't want to do this. Okay. He swings at you with his knife as you as you place your arm on his shoulder. Oofta. What's your AC? 18. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> he actually does manage to find <laughs> his way between your shields, but as it gets past your shields, you quickly pivot and he and he he's deflected. It was it was a close one. <laughs> he rolled 17. <laughs> it's pretty good for a random mugger. <laughs> I don't even, I don't have a stat sheet for this guy. Um he's what do you do now after you've deflected his blow? Uh I would counter with a shield bash yeah you you hit him <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not gonna make you roll for it um he he didn't really expect you so that that knife swing was you know instinctual and as you hit him you knock him back a good five feet he's and he's he takes one look at you he looks at your your spiked pavis shields and he just he just knows it's not worth it and he leaves. The <laughs> merchant on the ground looks up at you and says, w Why, thank you. I, 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 I don't have any money to, right now. I just got my shipment. I'm, I've been losing shipments for weeks. I've been all out. I don't know, just because I've been getting more shipments in to just try to get something through to the city. I, I don't. I, thank you. He says. What what is your name? Gilga. Gilga Kilmutton. Gilga. I You certainly seem the capable type. I've been okay. having a problem lately. I'm tr 
I'm trying to get some of my goods to Norganoth. By cart, uh, but I've been having some difficulty. I could pay you once, once we get the goods delivered, but... Would you be able to help me? Possibly? Are you looking for any work? You're on a mission, you know, from your, from your temple. Mm -hmm. And he's now just offered you a cart going the same way you're looking to go to the capital city of Norganoth. And he's even willing to pay you just to ride along. Sounds like a fair deal to me. Why, thank you. Of course. My name is Tomas. Uh, <gasps> I know, it's the same guy. <laughs> oh my gosh, imagine being on the same cart. Wow. Who knew? Okay. Erdan. Hey. Hey. The music stopped. It did. <laughs> Erdan. Ooh, it's another misty day at the monastery on the hill. But it's not just another day. It's the day that you're... You're, you're leaving. Uh, you've known for a little while that this was coming. You knew that, you know, the monastery on occasion makes deliveries. And you know that the abbess has been thinking that it's about time that you got out in the world again. You speak to the abbess of the monastery. And she says, Erdan, it is good to see you. It is good to see you. It's about time that... Uh, that I'm going to be going out and into the world again, isn't it? Yeah. She says, yes, you have been here some time now, haven't you? You've come a long yes. way since you first come to us. I see a lot of potential in you. Now, our neighbors, they need assistance. We're able to help them, and I've chosen you because I think we both know that it's time. I look forward to it. What can I do? We have some herbs and other ingredients for making potions that uh, the city of Norganoth, our neighbors, desperately need. So this is a mission of goodwill. Now, everything you need is, is going to be prepared for you. If you would like to go speak to Shen in the gardens, he should be finishing packing everything up for you. And uh, he can he could tell you more. Okay, th thank you, Abbas. I'll go okay. see him. As you turn to leave, just before you get to the door, she makes one last remark. She says, she doesn't say motorcycle noises. She says, <laughs> and or Dan, be good. So you head to the I gardens. Uh, oh, she no, she just closed the door. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Would you like to, would you like to mumble anything about the abbess telling you to be good? No. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh so you head to the gardens where you find Shen. He's a dragonborn and He's the first person at the monastery who you really got to know and who you worked alongside. Here in these gardens, you've gotten to know each other pretty well. As you arrive, you see Shen packing the last box of various herbs, roots, flowers. 
and with his scarlet red scales and gold eyes, he looks at you and, in the equivalent of a dragonborn smile, sharp teeth and all, his face lights up. Erdan! <laughs> I'm just about done. And I'd even packed a surprise for you. Ooh, I love surprises. He reaches behind the crates and grabs several uh, burlap bags and opens them up. I packed some food for you. Well, for the road, I mean. And he pulls out a variety of fruits and vegetables. And he shows you and he says, I even packed your favorite obaco berries. Or were those my favorite? And he lets out a, a hearty laugh. <laughs> the cart is loaded. Yeah. The cart is loaded with other supplies as well for the journey ahead and hitched to the front of a horse. Does the horse have a name? Yeah, it's Rufus. Oh, wow. Oddly enough, that's what so, my notes said, but you could have said anything there, you know. So not Elmer's? <laughs> it is not. No, it is not Elmer's. I don't think we're melting down the horse, but, uh, you know. Uh, no, can't do that to Rufus. It's a yeah. good boy. So, Friend just got a dog named Rufus. Shen seals the last crate. He returns the, the food that he prepared back to their bags. And he puts them on the cart. He turns to you. <clears throat> Is there anything you'd like to say to him before you go? Shen, it's been a, it's been great working with you in the gardens and here at the monastery. <laughs> You've taught me so much. And I hope to to use what you've taught me and be a better person that you've helped me become. I will see you hopefully sometime soon. Nice. With that, he looks at you. He says, I've learned so much from you too. And he hugs you. I have him back. Oh, <laughs> that's perfect timing with the music. Yeah, it was pretty good. Okay. It's like sad sound. And you <laughs> depart. You arrive in the city of Everhill. Uh, you were given directions to go and meet up with a merchant, Tomas, who, you know, knew while these were your herbs and you're bringing them, uh, you have the same you're bringing them to the same place. As you arrive to Tomas's shop, uh, with your cart outside and Rufus pulling the cart, he goes and he asks you, Oh, from the monastery. Yes, got some herbs for you. Or, ah, that's, that's great. Um, Oh, you brought your own cart and horse? Yep, good old chesty Rufus. Yes. I... I can't take the crates. Uh, I can't take your goods to Norganoth. I, I, my wagon's already full up. Uh, the roads have been dangerous. I'm... I'm... Packing it all and, and putting all my chickens in one coop, as it were. Uh, but I've hired protection. I think I think we could take we could travel together if you're willing to go to Norganoth. I I otherwise I'd have to leave them in my shop and well how popular it has been to steal the cer certain things lately. I I I don't know if they'd be safe. I see. I will I'll be happy to come along with your your other carts. Okay. My own. All right. So, the next day, as everyone goes and meets Tomas at the edge of town, uh, you are down with Rufus and your cart, and then Gilga, you're there, you know, in your armor, and Riker, you're there ready to drive Tomas's cart. Tomas says to you all, "Good, good, you've all arrived." Anybody want to say anything? 
No. <clears throat> okay. Hey, hey, I forgot why you invited me here. <laughs> <laughs> you are driving my cart. You're great with animals, you said. Oh, you jokester, you. He has his own cart and his own horse um, hitched up to it, ready to go. He says, "You, Gilga, uh, thank you for the other night. Uh, could you, you'll be riding on this cart here. And Riker, you, you'll be driving that one. Um, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Elf, sir. What, what was your name's, name again? My name's Erdan. Oh, Erdan. Um, I I could ride in the back with my crates, but do you, would you do you have room up there? Sure, I have room. Excellent, excellent. Okay, we can all ride together. And you set off at the at the in the early light of the day. As you're traveling down the road, uh, the music changes among other things. Simbala. When you left town, did you did you head home or did you stay there and contemplate a little while what what happened? Um I just made sure I got outside of town to yep. kind of consider what was going on. Okay. The crystal ball is gone. The smoke has left. It's been a couple of hours. And you feel... some kind of guidance to to travel a little bit to go and try to maybe see what you can do with this new power there is a road right ahead of you would you like to travel down it absolutely okay as you're walking you you walk for about an hour could you make a perception check? That's a pretty good perception check. You see, you rolled a 15 plus one for the people at home. You see a couple of carts headed your way. Now, Erdan, <coughs> which did you did your cart take the lead or did you follow? I think I would have followed. Okay, so your cart's in the back. Uh, that puts Gilga and Riker up front with the merchant's cart, and you're in the back with Tomas. Um, so I guess Gilga and Riker being in the front, would you like to roll perception checks? Would I like to, or should I? Well, you don't have to. <laughs> you don't, you, you, I mean, you're just, you could be just focused on the road if you want. You're driving the car. And there's a passive. There is a passive, that's true. Well, there you go. There's my garbage roll. Okay, yeah, you're just focused on the road. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, so much so that you don't even see the... Well, what Gilga sees, which is a man standing <laughs> in the road. <laughs> and you're driving the cart, so as you drive it up to him, uh, you just... You, you're not stopping. Gilga, would you... Are you, Would you like to do anything? Oh, I... Th there's a fella there. Yeah, I, I see him. <laughs> do 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 you stop the cart? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. 
So now everybody can see each other. Well, does anybody call out to who they see? Um. What? You're still a little <laughs> ways apart. About 20 feet. And the cart just I would abruptly came to a stop. Who we see. I think I would move to the side. Well, I don't think I would stand in front of a horse running me over. Yeah. Uh, Symbala, see, yeah. So you you're on the road. You can see, you you can see a couple of carts now about twenty feet away, and similarly, yeah, Gilga and Riker, you can see a man in the road about twenty feet away, <laughs> who's now stepped to the side of the road. And before anybody says anything and or shouts out or you know you start moving again, you hear a yell from the forest. All right, get the get the crates and kill all the witnesses. Roll initiative. <clears throat> oh, for five snacks. All of us. Yes. Ooh. Uh, need to find the button. Yeah, where's the button? It's initiative. Uh, next it's to it left right next armor to AC, class. Sir. Oh, there it is. The hell is that? Whoo! Yeah, is that a one. natural? No, that's 19 plus one. Ah, uh, okay. And where armor class is, if I, I believe that was the question, it's the big shield in the middle of your screen. Okay. What was the B? Nat 20. Why is it a B? <sighs> because it's TNT B. Beyond. Wow. Oh, that's bad. Hey, here's a quick question. Obviously, I know things that I think my character doesn't. Yeah. So sometimes well, that's to be expected, isn't called, it? Yeah, insight checks. You drop a dice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, he's far away. Yeah. And I, I saw his, him go away on the camera. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, digital rolling it is. <laughs> Did Actually, you lose it? That does, that does raise an interesting question. Um, at some point oh, yeah. soon-ish, I plan on ordering my metal dice. Would that be an issue if I switch to that eventually? Or no, do you, you want can, that all digital? You could roll it. Oh, the digital dice is not working for you guys. oof -da. What do you mean it worked for me? Yeah, that's that's true. I'm, I mean, mine was okay. <laughs> How do I see everybody else's rolls? Uh, you click the campaign button, and it will bring up. Okay. Uh, well, it did last time I clicked it. Yeah. Never mind. Well, I don't know what I'm talking about. The button well, next we'll to the this. campaign. The button next to the campaign button. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. I see it. Cool. So we've got uh. The mysterious voice and friends. Where's the game log? There we go. Wow, some big rolls. Oh, a natural 20 from Riker. That looks more like a 21 to me. What if you roll a natural 20? That's even better. So that means you essentially what what is that? You get to go. First, I mean it's first definitely, but I I think there's what's kind of give him advantage on whatever he does. Yeah. Everybody's I don't know I haven't I haven't actually played Five E enough to at all to know if like flat footed still a thing or not. Okay, so the order is definitely Riker, Gilga. <laughs> Symbala or rags. I'll call you rags. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. And Erdan. All right. So, so um, you were all surprised. So they actually. So coming out of the forest is a flurry of arrows. Immediately, and they're all targeted at the front horse. Uh, this is a couple of d8s. <clears throat> oh gosh. Oh no. Oh no. Um, yeah, the uh, the flurry of arrows comes out of the out of the woods, and they. Several of them hit the horse, and Uh-oh. about half of them hit the horse. The horse rears up, whinnies, and collapses. Poor Elmer. I know. Poor it's okay. So this is this was Tomas's horse. Um, Going to the big glue factory in the sky, folks. Yeah, as you as you look into the forest, you can kind of see them under the under, it's it's darker under the trees, but it's still daytime. So they're easy enough to see. There are now popping out from behind the trees uh several bandits, about 6 of them actually. That you can see. Um Riker, you are top of the order. How far are they away? Uh, they are about 20 feet away. And they just killed the horse. <laughs> the horse, the horse that you were, yeah. The horse in the cart you're in. Or the, ho- the horse pulling the cart you're in. You said half the arrows hit the horse, where'd the other half go? Uh, they went beyond, into the, into the forest on the right. So they're all on your uh, port side, your left. In the Cars universe. In yeah, in the Cars universe, <laughs> which is a good point. You're in combat now. Yeah, I got that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they're all on the left side in the Cars universe. Um. So combat works generally. You get. I know this is your first time. You get a movement. Uh, and you can get an action, and you can get a bonus action if you have, um, you know, something that qualifies as a bonus action. So, like, if you look at your character sheet, you have a movement speed. It's probably 30 feet. So you could easily get to these guys if you wanted to. Um, they're on, all kind of weird. bunched up. Oh, there it is. Walking speed. Yeah, 30 feet. Yep. And then you have a weapon. Uh, uh, you sh- I don't know. That's under actions on the right side of the. Yeah, no, he's he's not giving himself a weapon. Um, you have a quarter staff, probably. To make it show up in actions, you can go to equipment and then. Ah, uh, he has to equip it. <coughs> Your sword is right behind you. It um, it wouldn't take much for you to pick it up. I'd say. Tomas was expecting trouble. Okay. Um, I also see that it says that I can do two weapon fighting. I uh, with a bonus action or something. You you might be able to, uh, but you only have one weapon. Yeah, I was about to, but I think I only have the one. Okay. But that that changes the the um the damage and the hit DC, or the yeah. What is hit DC? So you have to hit someone. So when you swing, um, you go you roll against someone else's AC. So you'll roll a D twenty plus your modifier there, and you have to get above or equal to their armor class. Their armor class represents either their ability to dodge out of the way or the strength or the toughness or thickness of their armor uh, as to whether you actually do any damage. 
So what is 12 con? I mean, that is probably not relevant to hitting him with a scimitar that you have. No, that's the breath weapon. Oh, so that's a save. So they get they if they succeed in the save, they take half damage. Yeah, they're they're all they're all grouped together. But they're about 20 feet away, so you'd have to hop off the cart. If you wanted to breathe on them. Uh Sure, let's do that. Okay. So you hop off the cart. you hop off Walk the cart. Closer. How how much closer to them do you move? Uh you said they were like 20 feet away? Yeah, and it's a cone. So I'd say as long as you're if you're 10 feet away from them, you can hit all of them. You can probably hit a decent chunk of them from five feet away from them, but you're, you can hit them all if you just move, yeah, 15 feet from them. Because they're all kind of in a line, more or less, at the edge of the forest line. <laughs> sure, so I move five feet closer to them so that I'm 15 feet yep. away from them. And then you... And then I breathe some COVID on them. Well... <laughs> You, you, I mean, you're a dragon. You do, you deal cold, not COVID. That's, it's a different thing entirely. It, 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 it's a flu virus, not a cold virus. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so you can roll. Ah, no, they just have to make saving throws, and then you roll two d six. So you can hit the button for damage on that. Who's seven? That? And they take half on a success. It's a constitution DC 12. Okay. Oh. Oh. Okay. Well, you see that... <clears throat> Two of them, just immediately, they, they turn... Their skin turns um, this, like, pale white. They're still standing. Um, they are... They, they're not having a really good time. Uh, the other four of them all all are taken aback by the blow and they they've 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 saved, but so they take half damage. Um, and that's the end of your turn then. So one of the bandits goes and he looks at you. And this is one of the healthier ones. He and he he runs at you, and he's going to swing. What's your AC? Eleven. Okay, so he swings at you, and he just wildly misses. Um, Whiff. Yep. But he is now, he's now right next to you, or, or five feet right. away. That's the equivalent in uh, D&D. Uh, Gilga. Why? You're, you are on the cart. That would make sense, yes. Um. What would you like to do? Uh, you said they were how far away? They are 20 feet away, except for the one that's next to um, Riker, who is now only 10 feet away. 10 feet away. Because uh, you're you're you only move five feet forward to be in range, and then so he, he only moved up to you and went past you. Yeah. So you have to think people aren't five feet wide, but. In combat, people kind of exert control over a zone of space that is about five feet. 
Meaning, if you're within that space, you know, they, they would be swinging at you, right? So you're kind of... You're kind of five feet apart from each other while you're fighting. While you're exchanging blows, is kind of the idea there. Sure. That would be hilarious to watch actually enacted that way in real life. Just for the record. Yeah, so you're saying he's not he's not on top of me. He's not like breathing on me. Uh I mean he did just swing at you. But yeah, but he's not He's not in my same area. He's in melee, he's not He's in, he's in he's in melee, yeah. So you're not in the same if if it, if we were using a tiles grid for this, but it's theater of the mind, you would not be in the same tile. You would be adjacent tiles. Gotcha. Yeah, sure. All right, well, everybody's in range, but the closer one is probably posing a closer threat. So I would engage. Okay, so you move up to him and you would like to... Um, I'd probably go for a less defensive maneuver in this case. I'd probably go, go for a slashing maneuver. Okay, uh, roll to hit and roll damage. You can do them at the same time. Uh, sure. How would I do that? <laughs> Uh, do you have a weapon on your character sheet or an attack action? I have a shield. <laughs> uh... I'm not sure how to handle this. Oh, I see. Okay, so if we go to equipment. Ah, I see. Okay, we're gonna have to make you a custom uh, Pavis shield. Uh, for now, I guess let's just give you a sword. And we'll just treat this as the just the, as the equivalent, yeah, because it's gonna be it's gonna be just a basic common longsword. I knew so. I was going to end up causing some sort of problem. No, by doing you this. know, <laughs> it's okay. Longsword. Yeah, that's a that's a that's that's pretty strong. I um that oh you're proficient okay. I'm like, wow, that's pretty high. Yeah, so roll the hit and then damage. If it updated for you, I don't know if it did. It has not updated for me. One second. Yeah, I don't. I'm not sure about the how. If I change things on your sheet, how quickly that changes. I just had to refresh. Um. So what, what am I rolling to hit is, or am I just... Yes, yeah, so you just hit the roll hit DC. And then roll for damage if that... Yeah, well, just do it right away, and I'll handle it. Yeah. yeah. A 20 to hit hits for 8 damage, and you hit the one close to Riker. Uh, as you hit him... Yeah, between between the blast he took before and your longsword, he's he's done. After he missed that swinging blow, you came right up to him and you just hit him right in his exposed side, and down he goes. Cool. Uh, yeah. Where are you? Are you are you kind of to the left of Riker, right of Riker, or did you move even further forward? Because you could have been in any of those squares and hit this guy. Um, I don't really have a frame of reference to go off of. Uh, so doesn't... just, uh, so are you are you next to Riker or did you step a little bit ahead of him? Let's go with next to. Okay. Seems tactically sound. Sure. Don't get in front of the guy with the breath attack. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> he might it's do true. that again. I don't want to be there. <laughs> like, like, you know, f friendly fire's a thing. <laughs> yeah, the dwarves don't live too far from the dragons, uh, the dragonborn kingdoms. So you've heard of dragons and their fire attacks. And yeah, you know that they can be pretty terrifying. You don't you don't want to mess with that. Mm hmm. 
Uh, so it's another bandits go. He's gonna. This is one of the the one of the ones whose like skin is turning nearly blue because of just how cold he is. But he's gonna run up uh, again to Riker after that breath attack, and again he swings and he just whiffs. He just misses. It's a pretty pretty poor performance. Um, after him is another bandit. Tries to do more or less the same thing. Except this guy, he says, For Joe! And he runs at you, Gilga. And he swings. Does a... Does a 19 hit. Oof. Oh, it does. It do. Dang. That's fine. You'll probably live. I do want to point out that earlier, uh, Jake said, I'm not sure anything's going to be able to hear it hit you. And yeah, I've, six damage. I, I've been nearly hit once and actually been hit. Yeah, he swings his scimitar. Who actually <laughs> he swings a scimitar at you, and yeah, he, he takes a good... A, a good hit right in your uh, right in your leg as you were you know swinging swinging at Joe his clearly the, who this guy you know thought was a buddy um ouch for how much he says S six damage oof yeah I'm level one that's shit. that's half your health <laughs> that'll do it uh, okay. Rags. <laughs> it's so interesting to hear. Two yeah. really beefy looking people defending the caravan, two people attacking them, and then one more in the woods. Yep, but you're 20 feet ahead of the caravan, so you're about 40, I'm going to say 40 feet from uh, the bandits. Yeah. Uh, except, oh, except, for no. the, except for the two that are next to uh, Gilga and Riker. You could get there in, they are, they're about 25 feet from you. I'd say. Yeah, I'm not moving any closer to any of them. Okay. Um. You hear a voice in your head as okay. you think this thought that says, go ahead, use your power. Okay. Do you do the same thing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I absolutely still don't move any closer. There's no reason okay. to do that. <laughs> um, yeah. I will look at the one that just seemed to cleave through half of the dwarf and I will just look at that one firmly. <laughs> I will say run. Oh, and you cast command. Nice. Okay. Uh, is there a DC the on that? Wisdom, no, a wisdom saving throw. 13. Okay. Bandits notoriously smart this guy uh, do they do they respond right away um it would be on his turn then I think it's on his turn okay this guy's face just changes immediately from this from this like aggressive I'm gonna, and he's, you know, he was feeling pretty successful after taking a chunk out of her. His emotion just changes completely. Um, and Gilga and Riker are probably the only ones who can really see this detail, but he just, his face goes blank and you can see him really contemplating just what he's doing. All right. Um, did, you didn't move? That's what you did? Uh, no, I would want to sort of blend into trees because I don't want that other one to shoot at me or throw at me. Oh, okay. So, Try yeah. to stealth away. Okay, so you move behind um, behind the trees in the woods. Uh, on the same side or the opposite side of the of the bandits? From the, the same carts? side as the bandits. Okay. Uh, bandit again. Again in the from the back row there. We've now got one guy who, um, he's going to run up 
And he's actually going to try to run behind. He's He runs around Gilga to the back of the cart, and he gets... He, he picks up one of the crates. Uh, and then he's going to pick that up, and he's going to try to run away with it. Uh, that... Erdan. You're sitting on your cart. He's within range of you. You get... You can take an opportunity attack if you'd like. Is that a... Like an extra thing? Yeah, yeah so he's... He's uh, he's entered uh, melee range with you, and then he's trying to leave without using an action to disengage with you. So... Oh, okay. Essentially, you can you can hit him for free. Then I shall do that. Okay, um, I'm gonna say you you don't really have time to pick up your sword, so you, you can kick him if you'd want. Yeah, do I have to? I have to do DC right. Although you are a monk, so unarmed is kind of your, <laughs> kind of your thing. <laughs> you rolled a twenty. <laughs> Look at that roll. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and then you roll damage. Yeah, this guy, uh, he was already, he was one of the ones that was looking a little bluer. He started, after that long sprint and, you know, duck and dive around Gilga, he was looking like he was maybe getting a little bit of color back in him. But after you kick him, he, he just drops. He pops. That's what he More gets or less. For taking my herbs. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, then I am going to pick up my quarter staff and run to. The oh, next it does. Place. That doesn't make it your turn. You just got an attack of opportunity. Yeah, I'm telling you, my the rest of my turn. Oh, the, a bandit goes before you. You rolled the lowest. Oh. Yeah, you're at the bottom of the order. <laughs> Unfortunately. Oh no, you're not at the bottom. That's bottom. Still important. Okay, so another bandit, he takes one look at just how all of his comrades have just dropped. And he turns around and he runs into the forest. Uh, now it's your turn, Erdan. So who's all left in the bandits? There are two bandits, one in front of uh, Riker and Gilga, who looks terrified, and another one in front of them who looks a little bit in better shape. Uh, there is, yeah, there's two dead bodies. There's one running into the forest, and then there's one still behind the trees. Uh, I'm going to go to the one that is not preoccupied with Gilga and Riker, but okay. is near them. Pick up my quarter staff when I run over to him and yep. smack him up. Okay. Yeah, your quarter staff was right behind you. It, it, it's nothing to pick it up. Um, Again, you were warned that there might be danger on this route. And so you're say you you're hitting the one by Gilga and Riker? Or the, the one, one in the trees? Dead. The one that's the one that's less dead. Okay. You said there's two by them. Yeah, there's one that's like turning blue and he's just terrified. And then yeah, there's the another one. one. Yeah. Okay, so you, you uh Rolled a hit. I already did. Ah. 24 and 8. Whew. Yeah, that hits. Uh, yeah, you hit him with the quarterstaff. Bonk. He goes down. Uh, the other bandit that's out in the forest sees that his friend just ran, <clears throat> and he's turning around too. He's out. Okay. Back to the top of the order. It's uh, Riker. There's two bandits in front of you. One looks like he's absolutely terrified. Uh, how close are they? They're right in front of you. It's one's like right five. in front of you, and one's uh, a little bit to the left of him, but also in front of Gilga. So they're both within five feet. Yeah, they're both yeah. within five feet. You could you could melee them if you want. Um, and then Gilga will stand in this next to me, to the left or something. Yeah. Uh, where's everybody else? Uh, Erdan is also uh, next to you. He hit the he hit the stronger boy. 
Oh yeah, no, no. There's only one guy next to you and he's terrified. You, Erdan, and Gilgar are all standing together. Sorry. Oh. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. We got two guys running in the forest. One guy who looks absolutely terrified between the three of you. What did you call me for? Oh, okay, Gilga, sorry, Kill Mountain. <laughs> <laughs> the joke had to be made at some point. Of Knuckleheim. <laughs> On the holy quest for poutine! It's true. <laughs> yeah. So, what you, yeah, there's just one guy in between you. He's he's looking pretty blue. He's like he's like half frozen to death from your breath attack, and he looks just terrified. Uh, okay. Then I use my uh, scimitar. Okay, roll the hit and roll damage, just to save time and just do it all at once. Oh yeah, that hits. A uh, 16 hits, yeah. And four. Yeah, you hit him, and... Pops. Yeah, down he goes. So, nice. uh... Gilga. E. The only two that are left are in the forest. They are now about 40 feet away. Running. Okay. There's also that mysterious man down the road, but he seemed to um, he seemed to just do something, and that made this guy terrified. This the the lad who was right in front of you who just crumpled. Um. You don't have to do anything. Well, I I, I I'm not entirely sure what there would be. To do at this point, chasing them seems futile. Plus, you know, half dead here. So, uh, you could, you can use. I think your action as another movement. I think. So you could, in theory, move sixty if you didn't take an action. So you could, you could barrel after these these lads. Or you could just do nothing. That would be fine too. You could also exclaim anything. Victory, victory screech. Uh, or you can do nothing. That's an option. What are the thoughts of the rest of the party? Uh, we'll get there. What are you doing, Gilga? Well, that's what I was planning. Well, I know, but that's what I was well, doing. it's <laughs> in the heat of the moment. Uh. I guess uh, in that case I wouldn't do anything. I would set, wait and see what's going on with everybody else. Would be my okay. So delay. Action. Yep. Rags. So to speak. You ducked behind a tree, and mm -hmm. at last there's just the the person who used command on just crumpled, and now there's just two running in the forest. They're from you, uh, probably about fifty feet. Can I see them both? You can see them. They're they're running through the forest. So they're darting between the trees. Yep, that's fine. Um, I'm gonna try to reach out to the um, furthest one and put a little hand on his shoulder. Uh, I think chill touch. He's 50 feet away. Is that a touch 120 spell? Foot, 120 foot range. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Ah, damn. Wow. Chill touches. <laughs> That's a Spicy. long arm. No pun intended. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. 17 hits and 5 damage. Yeah, you could see that he is... You can't quite see because of how far away he is, but his movement um, seems to slow down. Okay. And then I'm going to move toward the other guy, 30 feet. Okay. Uh, then Erdan. I do nothing. I just watch, I guess. 
Okay, the other bandit uh, then goes and runs. The the healthy one goes and manages to run um, another uh, 60 feet. He's he's quickly escaping your range. Um, I'm going to say, yeah, so that bandit that you just froze and that you just chilled, he falls down. Um, he's kind of far away, so you can't quite see the state of him, but he, he falls. So you, you know where he is, Okay, but you can't see the state of him. Um, and that's, uh, I'm going to say the end of combat. As Can one I take guy. A one? Um, he's at the very edge of your range. He's and he's running between trees. So I'm gonna say with disadvantage, yes. Okay. Yep. Oh, once more on the to hit. we take the lower. Wow, two fifteens. <laughs> yeah, take yeah. the lower one of those. You hit the, the further <laughs> one running, and it's tough to see that far away uh, with the, you know, it's daytime, but running through the canopy and, you know, with all with with all the trees and stuff, um, you don't see him running anymore. You see him run behind one tree, and... Okay. You know that you, you know. You feel that your spell is connected, and you don't see him running anymore. I just want to glance over at the other guy's spot um, and see if it looks like he moved at all, from what I can see, or if he's somebody's moving now. That no, one that. Go. Yeah, that guy. Um, you're out of combat, so anybody, if you want to move freely, you can. But yeah, that guy is. I mean, he's down on the ground, and he seems he's breathing but shallow breaths he's he's at the end of his life okay um i'm gonna ignore him and go after the last one i just hit and go see if i can find him okay yeah you see his body he's just frozen cold he's frozen to the bone man y'all are a bunch of stone cold killers emphasis on the cold <laughs> I'm going to say to my, my comrades here, what's up with that guy? They were running away. What yeah, you, you three are all next him? to each other. Obviously, they were uh, not expecting people who knew how to handle themselves. Dragon. True. And then or, out or, out from or, behind the behind that. the cart pops out a cowering uh Tomas. He says, Oh, uh, oh, oh I, I think I hired the right people. <laughs> and he takes a look at at um his horse in front, he's like, Oh Oh Hoovesy. Hoovesy? <laughs> Hoovesy, no. <laughs> Did and you just pull that out of your ass? <laughs> I, him, I, look, if I write it down, then that's his, that's his name. <laughs> like, oh. And he looks he looks at the cart. And the cart's in good condition. And uh, Rufus is still back there. He's a little frightened, um, the horse. He looks uneasy. He's, he's moving back and forth. He doesn't like that he's reined in, and he doesn't, you know, he's frightened, I think. I'm going to go and console him. Ah, okay, good. Okay, so there's you just give him a, a pat on pat on the nose, you know, you say easy, easy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Rufus Rufus calms down. Um Yeah. Uh Hoovesy is dead. Tomas is alive. And you've got one um unconscious, barely breathing bandit and um five dead bodies. a lot of dead bodies. That is. That is. We'll eat for weeks. No, I'm kidding. 
<laughs> you, I mean, the dragonborn might. <laughs> I want to see if there's, uh, if I can tell what where they they were maybe running to, if they were trying to go somewhere, or if there's tracks that lead back towards something else. Okay. Uh, yeah. What's the? Let's see, I'd say tracks for like tracking. Do you want to roll a survival? Yeah, wow. these guys, they moved the, through the forest and you can tell they left a they left a good path of tracks when they came to this uh, this ambush point that they uh, clearly had planned. Uh, it leads it leads into the forest the same way the guys were running. Does anybody else do anything? I don't think you all have been properly introduced. Tomas nope. yells out. He says, hi, uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, thank you. We were I'm... we were traveling to Norganoth if you if you, you know, would have cared to join us. I'm going to point into the woods. They came from that direction. They're just bandits. <laughs> Tomas says, ah, they, I knew it wasn't animals. Ah, bandits. They must have been stealing all of my shipments. And look at this. With this, oh, who's he? So reliable. So many years. I, I can't pull this cart. I'm, how are we going to get all these goods? Because to the city. So you, you do have one working cart and you have another um, cart that is the, the cart's actually functioning. Just there's no horse to pull it. How heavy is the cart? <laughs> uh, Pretty heavy. Is that an imperial or a metric measurement? Uh, pre Pretty heavy. Well, what, what were you thinking? How many people would it take to pull it? Uh, how many of us would it take to pull it? Hey, well, since you wounds? just lost half your health, that would, that's, you're not feeling in the greatest of shape, but uh, you reckon that at full strength, you might be able to, together with, with the help of the whole party, possibly pull a cart. What about Cure Wounds? You could cast Cure Wounds. On the horse, I mean. Oh no, no, the horse is dead. I thought you meant on Gilga. Resurrection. What, yeah. What about yeah. mending then? Um, <laughs> That's for minor damage, like a broken twig. Just heal the freaking dwarf, Jesus. <laughs> is it dead, dead, or dying? <laughs> it's dead. The horse is dead. <laughs> Can I speak with dead animals? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'll note to you in <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try to stabilize the one that's not dead yet. Okay. Uh, yeah, you want to make a medicine check? You succeed. Yeah, he's he's you. You manage to um. Well, you rip off his clothing to make a uh, to make a bandage, and which might not be the best, but hey, it's uh medicine in the wild and he he's not going to die in the the next couple hours anyway uh he's still unconscious can we see rags from where we are is there too much foliage in the way yeah you you can you can see him um he's about you could yell at him uh, he's about 50 feet away now um at the unconscious one, uh, and yeah, he was. Tomas yelled at him, yelled and said hello. And then was subsequently ignored. Yeah, that's true. Okay, uh, let me think. Tomas says he's. Uh, well, maybe, maybe. Oh. I I can I can go 
I could ride ahead. I can, and I can come back with a horse. I, I surely, I, I know the town needs all these potions. I, they, they could need, use all the potions that were stolen too. I, uh, really, they need everything they can get. That's the situation's pretty dire. I'm not going to hear Thomas is talking. I'm just going to interrupt. No, he's him. shouting. Hey, okay. this one's not dead. If you guys care. Okay, party knows. That's oh. great. Are you going to kill him? <laughs> no, wait, wait, wait. Don't kill him. He can tell us where the rest of my goods are. That's what I was going to say. That makes oh. sense. So, uh, Tomas begins walking over to you in the forest. He, he, I, you know, I'm going to look around um, at the tree lines and stuff to see if there's anyone else. Yeah, roll a perception check. Around. So I know we have a guy named Rags. But you don't see anyone. Rags. Okay, I'm going to follow with what's his face, Tomas. Okay, into the forest. Fireboarding. What was that? Did you say waterboarding? Yeah. Rags? Oh my I gosh. I know. <laughs> I mean, it's not like it's torture, remember? <laughs> totally. I mean, some of you are good <laughs> in alignment. Um, I'll just throw that one out there. I'm... Okay, so you you and Tomas walk out. Um, Gilga and Riker, do you follow? I'm still half dead. <laughs> yeah, sure. you're half dead, but you can move around. Fair, I'll follow. You're not feeling too good, but you I mean you you can move. You still have your full ability to move and and such. You just feel like if you had to pull that cart on your own, whew, that would not be that would not be fun. Also, I just want to point out real quick, so you can do a little bit of tech support, the little uh, D&D Beyond thing on the side of the stream. Is it broken? Does not, show that, does not show that my health has been downed. Did you change it on your sheet? I did. I see it as six. Oh, okay. Well, that's... Did it just not update for me for some reason? Well, that's just... That's lovely. That's dwarfist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> When I see them coming out, I want to move a little bit away from that person that I stabilized and climb a tree and try to take a look around. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, you can roll a perception check. You Didn't don't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> you see leaves. I guess it would uh, Trees. behoove me to keep an eye out as well. Extra pair of eyes and all that. Um, I'm gonna say I'll just I'll just say you you probably don't need to roll more perception checks. There's nothing out here, other than the tracks that you know and you know which way they went. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Um, as this goes on, the cultist. No, there's no cultist. The bandit. <laughs> There's no cultists here. I was like, wait a minute, when did I go to my other campaign? <laughs> it's true. It's true. Uh, yeah, the the kobold, no, it's a bandit, wakes <laughs> up. The beholder, no, it, it, he's he is a bandit. He, he wakes up and he's groggy. He's on the floor and he looks down and he sees that you bandage his wounds and he's like, eh. it, you can tell he's awake. And he's just begins to groan. Uh, oh, my leg. My everything. Oh, it was so cold. Yeah, nobody actually struck this guy. You, you only just, like, froze him half to death. Um, actually, you froze him 99% to death. <laughs> Does anybody do anything about the groaning man? Disinterested. <laughs> okay. He stops groaning. <laughs> I'm gonna ask him why he attacked us. 
And have you been attacking this fine Tomas's carts this whole time? Uh, it, yeah, we've been we we we've, we've been taking the crates. What do you do with them? We 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 do we give them to these people for money or bandits? Picked, though that's an excuse. Yeah, everybody's got to make a living. Oh, I. But usually you get a real job. Hey. So how'd you get into banditing? My father was a bandit. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all you ever knew. Oh, I. <laughs> That's my line. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not a Kenku. I met one once, though. What did he say? Oh, I. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh. Look, are you gonna kill me? No. Unlikely. Probably. <laughs> Look. <laughs> That scaled very quickly. <laughs> if, but first, you got to tell us where the uh, where the rest of the stuff is. The, 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 that's a very bad threat. Just for the record, I'm not going to kill you until you tell me what you what I want to know. That's very ineffective. That's bad, bad tactics. <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> he looks around and he looks at. He looks at Sinbala, and he looks at Tomas, who is not happy with this guy. Um, and he looks, and he sees you, Gilga, and he says, uh, "You, you're a, you're a paladin. I I know that symbol. Uh, Fatus, is it? Your God. Look, I'll tell you what I know. As long as you promise to let me go, if you, you." If you swear on your god, Fotis. Your god's name is Foltis, just so everyone knows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Close enough. And I'll not run to your life. Okay. He's gonna roll an intelligence check. <laughs> Okay. Oh, that, that'll have to do, I guess. I, um, well, me and my mates here, we were grabbing the crates. Some, some folks down, down that way. And he points down, you know, past the tracks. There were some, some men in robes. That's where we take the crates. They pay us. They pay us quite well. They say potions, potion supplies, highest value. We've been doing this for uh, several moons now. It's been good money, but that's that's all I know. I don't know what they do with it. I just know that they they're in that cave down there, that way about about a mile, and we bring them the crates and they pay us. Do they know you? Ah, uh, no, that'd be Jeremy over there. Well, that used to be Jeremy over there. He, uh, he's the one who knew everything. He, he's the one who they talked to. Would they talk to another? Well, sometimes when we come back up and you have to they, not the biggest fans, but they get quite angry, in fact. 
but we've been pretty reliable. I I think they might. They might understand that we had trouble. Uh, why? I Look, I don't want to go back to them alone. How many they, are there? Uh, well, I've, I've heard of that cave. It's fairly large. It could house, you know, several dozen, I think. But since they moved in, I've only ever met or seen two of them at a time outside. Without any special precautions to keep anything from this individual. I say we keep him alive. Could help us in. Look, if you're gonna make me go back there, they don't seem uh, the nice sort, you know. The kind that would let me come back alone. Alone, I'm not robbing any more carts. And I know more than they'd like me to know. Tomas says, I think we should just tie this one up and leave him. That's what not, not what Tomas sounds like. <laughs> oh, I think we should just tie him up and leave him. <laughs> That's not what he sounds like either. I don't think that was <laughs> the correct one either. Oh, jeez. Yeah, he has so many different accents. Who is this guy? Oh, maybe we should start investigating Tomas. <laughs> maybe, maybe the bandit's the good guy here. I don't know. <laughs> this guy's had like five different voices. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, the bandit has switched between uh, Scottish yeah. and uh, Middle Eastern twice. Mm. Oh, I. <laughs> <laughs> That's on me mother's side, you see. <laughs> oh, and that's my grandfather. He was a bandit. <laughs> if anyone wanted anyone, to know. How far does it go back? <laughs> I don't know. What about um, your grandfather's father? I don't know. Never met him. You didn't hear stories of his thieving past? I didn't meet my grandfather either, and I don't think my father met his grandfather. Short life. Yeah, that's what being a bandit will get you. I, I feel like my life's getting shorter by the minute. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> So Tomas says, I, he, he looks at uh, Erdan, he says, I, I don't think anyone else is going to come for the, for the, for the goods and the carts right away. It seems like we've dispatched these ones. Uh, can I, can I take your horse and, and ride to town? I can, I can bring back help and we can get, get another horse. We can bring the carts. Uh, it, it shouldn't take me more than a day. Um. day well there and back we've been riding you know several hours now and what if you get ambushed well i'd be alone riding a horse no cart i think uh i think i could i could outpace anything i've ridden these roads for years it's only recently that the goods have been missing <laughs> goods of voice again I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I tell you what, if you if you folks, you seem very capable. If you can go and get my goods back, I I know your monastery. I know that they're donating these herbs. I'll donate my herbs if you can just go in and get them back. That that sounds doable. Um, I think we should maybe see go to this little hideout and see if maybe they have a horse over there that we can 
No, borrow. It's a good idea. Hey, it's that, or you could spend the next couple of days pulling the cart. Yeah, that doesn't sound very fun. Not with this leg. <laughs> well, I can cure your leg. That'd be nice. For a price. Oh my god. That'd be less nice. <laughs> oh, the, the dragonborn's looking for work. <laughs> I look at Riker with a deep look of disdain. You do actually have, um, because you 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 actually uh, have. Uh, they no. just want to point this out. You healed the fucking bandit for free. <laughs> no, no, no. That was bandit. no. That was um. That was. Oh, Rags. my mistake. My and mistake. he he didn't spend anything on it. No spells or anything. He just did a medicine check. Just you know, simple. Similar voices and all that. Well, I I said ears. he bandaged him, but he really didn't bandage him. He just kind of like warmed him up a little bit. He just kind of like you know let him. By stripping clothes, if I yeah, remember. Yeah, 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 well, um, it's a warm day. He doesn't need the insulation when he's so cold, you know. Well, the clothes are cold. Yeah, yeah. From the yeah, for, yeah. So you, you actually, you, yeah. <laughs> Tomas uh, interjects. Okay, so it's settled then. I'll take the horse. Uh, Rufus, you said his name was, and I'll, uh, I'll be back in about a day. So he goes back okay, to the cart. Okay, hurry back. He starts, he starts unhitching, unhitching the horse. Um, and if nobody else does anything, he, um, he rides away. Towards Norganoth, if it, anyone cares. I, I thought that was in play. Well, he could have gone back the other way, but Norganoth is uh, closer, you reckon? Fair enough. You would, based on the the plan trip, you would have gotten there in the wee hours of the night. Um, so you're you are most of the way there. Heck, I mean, Rags walked from uh, Norganoth to here, so you're not that far away. But it is hmm. still a long way to pull a cart. Do I feel the expended power return? Um. Do you mean like your spell slots? Like a short rest? Ah, yeah. You've just been talking to this guy. Um, yeah, it's 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 about sunset now, and yes, um, I'd say you can all take a short rest. So on your character sheets, there's a button for that. You can hit short rest, and I think it's mostly automatic. I've got two buttons. Somebody tell me before I modify your sheets on accident by clicking the button. So you have to like confirm it. Okay. So, yeah. So when I click short rest, there's a a button that says reset maximum HP changes during this rest, and there's another one. Um, that says, that's not relevant. Your max HP hasn't die. changed. The hit dies, I believe, to regenerate health. Ah. Uh. did it. Okay. Nothing happened because I wasn't. Yep. The only person injured was Goga. Um, and it didn't do anything when I did it. It didn't did you check bump your health back? Check the box under the hit die. Yes. I see you as having... the button twice. Oh no. Because you gotta confirm it. Oh, it gives me a... a, a the timer is to confirm it. Gotcha. Yes. All right. I misunderstood the timer. Yep. You guys. And did nothing. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Do you want to? Yeah. If you just want to roll your hit dice, is that how short rest work? There was a button to regenerate that she probably didn't check in the short rest. The 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 little box that says. Uh, under hit die. Yeah. Yeah, I checked it. Oh, nothing happened. Let me try doing it without it checked. Yeah, it didn't have to do anything. No, nope, that's nothing. Okay, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, you know what? That might mark off a hit dice, but do you want to just roll and then heal? So what does um, it say your hit dice is? A D... 
Yeah, a uh, d10 plus d10 two. D10 plus two. Yeah, so just roll a d10 and add two. I suspect you're going to be back to full. I'm not even going to bother adding two. <laughs> okay, yeah, there you go. There's probably a better way of doing that, but I think I can add two on my own. I'm not that dumb. Uh, yeah, I think there's a button for hit dice somewhere, but I don't know. I'll have to get more used to this. Hey, it's the first time, everybody. Welcome. <laughs> okay. So Tomas has left. The two carts are still in the road. Um, there's one live bandit. Uh, four dead bandits and then one dead Jeremy, who was also a bandit. <laughs> and a dead horse. It's um, quite the battlefield. What do you all do? It's it's nighttime. <clears throat> or it, it it is um sunset. I heard there is a cave. Shall we go and snoop around? Get some... I think that's a good idea. Seems logical. Okay. Um as it's getting darker, do it's but is Rags coming with us? I'm just oh, yeah. like looking at the carts. Are you just going to leave those there? Tomas thought it was safe enough. Tomas thinks so. It's good enough for me. It's his stuff. Well, some of it. <laughs> yeah, and besides, if it gets stolen, we know where it's going. <laughs> Thieves. What'd you say? Because there's no other thieves. Yeah. I mean, you did a perception check. You looked around. <laughs> Nobody saw anything. <laughs> um, which one is uh, Tomas's cart? Uh, the front one. I'm going to go start walking toward the cart. And I'm going to go look inside it. Okay. I'm going to follow you. Hey, guy, what are you doing? Might uh, be something useful for us. Inside, yeah. Inside, there are crates. Um, do you open any of them up? If they let me, yeah. Okay, you go to open one up, and any objections? I don't have any objections. Before you okay. open that, uh, you actually joining us? Well, I intend to go see where these bandits came from. All right. All right, and then you crack it open. Uh, that one has just herbs, flowers. Another one? Yeah, I'll just keep looking. Um, okay, if, you crack them all open. Uh, they're they're mostly I... herbs and flowers and supplies to make potions. However, one of them actually contains 12 potions of healing. It's kind of... Wow. I would take... <laughs> Uh, is there medicinal herbs that I would recognize that would would help for like survival? Yeah, no, like, they're 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 all um, oh for anti poison. Um, they're all medicinal for like potions of healing. Uh, you know that combined. I mean, you know, potions of healing can uh, cure simple poisons. You know, the basic okay. certain basic ailments. So yeah, you rec you reckon that yeah y you could cure poisons with these ingredients uh, if you were appropriately skilled okay I would just want to take a sampling of that and then take two potions okay yes yeah, so you take hey, a sampling of the herbs stealing and from the carts two potions well we'll see if we need this so you're gonna give it back if we don't use it we'll see then I think it's fair um, to put it back but we might need it, back it, uh, if you used it. But yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. Is like we we should bring him with us on our trip to the cave in case something happens. Because I think Tomas would, at the very least, want us to be alive rather than dead. 
Well, I'm assuming he can't pay a corpse very well. Exactly. Yeah. How much do you each take? There's a dozen total. Uh, two are gone now. I'll take two. I'll take okay. two. Okay. Uh, Erdan? Takes none. I'm not going to take any. Okay. I'll, I'll take two more really and hold on to it for Erdan. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So there's there's now four potions left in the box. Um, do you put the lid back on, or do you just? Yeah, I put all the lids back on. Okay. And w- w- were the lids labeled? No. Damn. I, I, so every box is stamped um, to Norganoth Hospital. So, you reckon they're all going to the same place? I was going to switch the labels on them just to mess with people. <laughs> you could just write on them yourself. Well, that wouldn't make any sense. If there weren't labels there, then they weren't expecting the labels to be there. <laughs> and none of the boxes in the, uh, the next carts uh, had any labels. I don't know any difference, right? So I'm going to start going to the next cart. Yeah, sure. That's the uh, cart from the monastery. There's just herbs in there. That's it. All right. With that, I move on. Okay. Where would you all like to go? You've taken a short rest. So, um, you know, that was the, that couple hours. Uh, it's as you spend the time at the carts. Uh, the light is now dwindling, and if you don't have light, you will have difficulty seeing. Or, except for those of you who have dark vision, which is half of you. Uh, <laughs> this was very well thought out. Well, Riker doesn't have dark vision. The rest of you do, though. Dragonborn? Yeah. What is dark vision? You can see in... In the dark. In the yeah, dark. I got that. I mean, but is it a spell or what? Nope, that's just a natural innate ability. So it's as it, you can see in darkness as if it's dim light and dim light as if it's a bright room. Hey, well, give me so I'm saying, like, is that something that I had maybe missed when uh, adding stuff or what? It's possible. Uh, it's your first time filling out the sheet. Let me see. Dragonborn. I don't think so. I don't think so. If you went through the guided thing, it should have done it for you. I yep. want your quick build. Dragonborn do I not have dark vision. Would have. Yeah. That's fine. It just uh, means that you might need a torch if you want to see, or you can hold their hand and they can guide you. Hey everyone, it's uh, Nubcake Jake here. I hope you all enjoyed our first session of the Norganoth Saga. It's my first time DMing, and for some of our players, it's their first time playing uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed. If you want to catch the next one, you can try to catch it live. It'll be on March 27th at about 3 p.m. Central. That's 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. You can find the link to that right there, right above, or down in the description below. And hope to see you all there. See ya!